Welcome back guys. Today we're talking iodine. So guys, today, like I said, we're going to talk about iodine. Uh, we're going to go into a little bit of how it works, the best I can explain it. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the different, uh, how, what iodines to use. Um, and then I think we might talk about some other, some pro future projects and, or, or something like that. So the first thing I want to talk about is kind of how, how iodine works. So. What, with all the research I've done and such, I'm one to like this to kind of simplify things. So what I got from my research is this: that iodine likes to attack or likes to take steal ions and stuff from oxides like metal, uh, metal oxides like uh, aluminum oxide and iron oxide so on so forth right so, okay so and it really likes aluminum oxide which is most pistons are are made of some sort of aluminum so what it does is it goes and it's, it's sitting there pulling all the ions off and you can kind of see it doing that if you have a scope when Crazy D and I, we put it in that little, um, a little Alice, a D is like a D12. Uh, oh, by the way, guys, just kind of step back a little bit here. This video was inspired by some of the backlash we got from that video, and I decided, and I, nothing's different. It's just a different tractor. So, anyways, guys, like I was talking about the iodine. So. What it likes to do, like I said, it likes to attack aluminum or oxide, metal oxides, like aluminum and, 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 and steel and such, right? just to recap. So what it does, like I say, it goes and it pulls ions away and is grabbing and breaking up ions, the ions and stuff, it just breaks down the aluminum oxide. So it's uh, back to its, its just its main elements or main, there's very few um, ions and stuff left to it. So it makes, breaks that bond that is ca caused by the corro by corroding. And, and like I said, you can see it, when we dumped that iodine in that little atlas that we, we did, I took my scope down and you can see it was, the iodine was around the edges and it was just boiling. It was like it was bubbling like it was a boiling pot. It was just super and super aggressive. And it takes a few days of that to to work properly like it did. It took us about it took about a week and then we had that we rocked it and it broke loose. Um, there's other ways. I found other ways to to break the engines loose. Uh, longer term ways uh, is, is I don't know how, I don't know why, but olive oil works. Um, I've heard so many different ways, stories and stuff. I think one time I used um, B12, is it what it is? The carburetor cleaner stuff. I use that in a hurry, when I'm in a hurry to get an engine broke loose. Um, but anyways guys, so that's kind of how it works. Now, the iodine to use. First thing, I, uh, one thing I can tell you from experience here, brown iodine does not work at all. Doesn't work at all. It just ends up becoming a big gumball on top. A gummy mess on top. It doesn't really do anything. It doesn't boil. It doesn't bubble. I just don't think there's enough. I think what I bought was like 10% iodine, which is just not enough iodine to do squat. Um, now, I think I'm not sure what the bottles were that we got from our friend, our business partner Joe was the one that bought those in for it, brought those, bought them for us to use. 
and I'm not sure what iodine, what concentration that is, but it's the pure clear iodine. That stuff does work. That was what we used and it does work. It works wonderfully. Um, other guy, wise guys, um, I think maybe we can look at some projects, future projects, things I'd like to get on to eventually here soon, and and maybe some other things that we need to, I need to t try to work out the time to get finished, so let's go look at those. Okay guys, so here's one of the last projects we got to get finished. Um, we uh, sent, a, we sent a, a carb for this old girl over at Uncle Craig. He just, he's rebuilt so many of those carburetors over the years from all the older farm malls he used to collect and then he got into, got into the uh, more into the 50s era internationals and such but anyways those old Zenas are the same across Case and all the other companies that built tractors in the early years um, just a little tailpipe there's only difference on them but anyways I digress as soon as Uncle Craig gets done with that, I think actually Minty and I are supposed to finish finish it because all it really needs is to be bolted back together. Uncle Craig rebuilt it for us, did the, the most, the more tedious work of it. Um, we'll get then I get that done. We'll and that that's the last of the projects I need to get finished for KZD. Um, like I said, Minty's doing well, quite a bit of the uh, stuff for the lot right now. Which is, is fine with me, I needed the break, but um, I guess guys, this puts us to the point of, if you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you feel it's worth sharing, please go ahead. Uh, if you've not subscribed yet, go down and hit that subscribe button. And right beside that subscribe button, after you hit the subscribe button, should be a little bell pop up. Go ahead and click that bell, mark all, because it lets you know when all my videos come up. And you won't miss anything coming come up. So, and I guess guys, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.